Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here sharing some questions and a possible answers related to lupus. Uh, we don't have any disclosures. The hematological alterations that you can see in lupus are kind of frequent. The more frequent alteration is chronic inflammatory anemia. Also, you can find autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Uh, almost 8% of patients with autoimmune hemolytic anemia can develop lupus, and 10% of patients with lupus has autoimmune hemolytic anemia. There is a subtype of autoimmune hemolytic anemia who has a positivity for antiphospholipid antibodies. Until now, there is now some relation between prognostic factors and this association in patients with lupus. Thrombocytopenia is more frequent in patients with antiphospholipid syndrome. There is a positive association between the positivity to lupic anticoagulant or anticardiolipin antibodies to the presence of thrombocytopenia. Evan syndrome, which is autoimmune hemolytic anemia and uh, thrombocytopenia is just 5% of patients with lupus and almost a 10% of patients with antiphospholipid syndrome. The etiology of the leukopenia is more complex. There are uh, various factors that can explain that. One of them could be the changes in the endothelial phenotype, which makes active and procoagulant endothelium, and there is an association between neutropenia and possibility to antiphospholipid antibodies. There are antibodies who can destroy bone marrow precursors of leukocyte and uh, bone marrow. Lymphopenia don't show a positive association with antiphospholipid antibodies in lupus patients. So we have two objectives, one descriptive, another one analytic. The descriptive is to determine the frequency of hematological alterations that occur in the first 30 days after the diagnosis of lupus in patients from gravel cohort. And the second, the analytical, is to establish the multiplicative interaction of such hematological alterations with the detection of antiphospholipidic antibodies as determinants of vascular thrombosis in these patients. We analyze the age distribution with descriptive statistics. We use nominal and category variables with absolute and relative frequency, and we do a comparison of the age and gender using U-test or man -windy. The univariate analysis to prove the association between antiphospholipid antibodies in the first 30 days of lupus diagnosis with the development of vascular thrombosis in some time in the follow of these patients was done with the estimation of relative risk and confidence interval of 95%. We use the same parameters to prove the association between hematological alterations and vascular thrombosis. This is a retrospective dynamic cohort, like it's the same like a uh, historical cohort. We can calculate uh, relative risk in this time, uh, in this kind of cohort, because this, the, uh, when a patient with lupus has a positivity to antiphospholipid antibodies, the time to develop the major outcome, which is vascular thrombosis, it's a standard. Almost the, the most patients can develop this outcome in the first year. So in this kind of core, you can calculate the uh, relative risk. To measure the potential impact, we calculate the attributable fraction with a confidence interval of 95%, and this was uh, our definition of thrombosis, arterial and venal thrombosis. The strain of association between hematological alterations and antiphospholipid antibodies was evaluated through OS radio. The same was done to the association between hematological alterations and vascular thrombosis. We want to explore the multiplicative interaction between hematological alterations and antiphospholipid antibodies in the development of vascular thrombosis, so we used an stratified analysis. With this analysis, the segmentation, the segmentation by strata was done using the variable hematological alterations. And to determine the homogeneity of the relative risk, 
a specific base strata, we use G square and Hazel besides the comparisons of the crude and a specific relative risk by strata and together. We inform just the values of crude and a specific relative risk by strata because of the heterogeneity of the strata relative risk. This is the software when we analyze data. So we analyze 1,048 lupus patients from the GLADEL cohort, 89.8% were women. The relation between women and men's one was 8.9 to 1, and the median age of diagnosis was 27 years. In the findings of hematological alterations in the first 30 days after diagnosis of lupus, just 30.4% of patients has some uh, hematological alterations with the most frequent lymphopenia and uh, interesting thrombocytopenia who is described with more frequency in, otro, in, in others uh, populations is low in our population. The positivity to antiphospholipid antibodies in the first 30 days is a 9.25% of patients with lupus diagnosis. And we try to get an association between positivity to antiphospholipid antibodies in lupus patients and the development of vascular thrombosis in these patients. We found a relative risk of 3.31, the association between hematological alterations in lupus patients and vascular thrombosis has an OR of 2.23, and the association between antiphospholipid antibodies in lupus patients with hematological alterations in these patients has an O radio 6.17. This is an important table. This is the segmentation of the relationship between antiphospholipid antibodies and vascular thrombosis based on hematological alterations. When you have a patient who doesn't have an hematological alteration, this can have a behavior, sorry. This has an a behavior, a protective behavior. Almost patients, the most patients of this group doesn't develop any vascular thrombosis. But when some patients has an hematological alterations, whatever it was, uh, this, patients, this patient has a vascular thrombosis who qualitatively uh, multiplicate the risk when has a positivity to antiphospholipid antibodies. So the etiology of thrombosis in lupus is marked by its heterogeneity. There is less lecithopenias at the beginning of the disease in this cohort in comparison with other cohorts. And also we have some limitations secondary to historical cohort. This is a cohort from 15 years. Uh, the diagnosis of cytopenias in laboratory was different, so that is one of the biggest limitations of this work. Our conclusions are that although common, the hematological alterations detected in the first 30 days after the diagnosis of patients with lupus are correlated with antiphospholipid antibodies of different subtypes. In addition, the concomitant presence of hematological alterations and antiphospholipid antibodies determines a subgroup of patients with lupus with greater probability of developing vascular thrombosis. Thank you. Thank you very much. This paper is now open for discussion. Uh, this is uh, Jaime Calvo from Spain. Congratulations for your presentation. I would like to ask you a methodological issue. Uh, in order to demonstrate uh, in, an interaction between uh, hematological manifestations and uh, antiphospholipid antibodies. It, it would be uh, more simple just introduce an interaction term in a multi-body analysis. Can you explain me why did, uh, did the first the first thing that we want to know is if the patients with lupus and hematological alterations has the outcome that which was uh, vascular thrombosis. Second, 
we know that patient with lupus who has positivity to antiphospholipid antibodies uh, has thrombosis. The way and you can uh, integrate these two outcomes to uh, evitate the alteration of uh, BS, secondary to hematological alteration, is make an strata analysis. That what, uh, that's why we did an strata analysis to make a relationship between the confounder factor, which we thought that was uh, hematological alterations. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the other option that Dr. Calvo Allen mentioned is actually, I think, much better because you are measuring the individual factor and then you are measuring the interaction. But my question actually had to do with other factors that really can affect thrombosis. You didn't include that in your equation, so you are really only limiting yourself to just one aspect of the whole picture. You didn't include, for example, something as common as, or as important as the smoking. We know there are other factors that uh, make vascular thrombosis a risk, but the only thing that we, know, we want to know in this uh, project was if the hematological alterations can be association can be associated with vascular thrombosis. Uh, obviously, this is a first work, and we have a lot of questions after doing that, and we hope to resolve in next papers. Yeah, thank you. I, I have a question. Why did you pick up 30 days after uh, diagnosis? What's the, the reason for that uh, period of time? This is the time that was in the Gladel cohorts base data. From the uh, first diagnosis, uh, they get 30 days to get all the exams, so we take that from the base data. Thank you. Thank really, you very much. Is, oh. that really, is that really diagnosis or, or, in, or entering the cohort? I think it's very important to make the distinction, because not every patient enters Gladel cohort at zero time. They enter the cohort with some disease duration. So if you're telling me that this is 30 days from entering the cohort, it's very different than 30 days from diagnosis, and I think you have to really make that clear. Okay, thank you.